So I want to share with you today something uh, that I do a lot of, and that's glaze mixing. Uh, I know I talk to a lot of people when I'm out selling my pottery and you know sharing how we do things, and uh, you know I think a lot of people are interested in it, and I think it's often daunting to think about oh you got to make the piece and you got to put glazes on. I know people uh, also buy their own glazes. I feel like that's really expensive, and uh, I feel like if anybody can bake a cake, you can make a glaze. And so I want to share just a little bit of what I'm doing, my process, and show you that it really isn't that complicated. And when you actually break down, you know, the cost to make a glaze. Uh, you can make a five gallon pail of glaze and have it cost you about 30 bucks where if you were to buy a five gallon pail of uh, any of the pre-made glazes you're going to spend a few hundred dollars on that much uh, volume so so for what that's worth I wanted to at least just kind of give you an intro to this and then really just let you see how I make a small I'm going to do a test batch I want to make a copper red uh, that I'm going to put into my glaze or I'm sorry put into my kiln tomorrow and uh, see how it turns out so uh, we'll go ahead and switch over to my table and I'll show you kind of how I prep and set things up and then uh, some of the tools I use to get that done. So, Clink, 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 clink. No, just kidding. <laughs> all right. Okay. Just all the noise in the background. Okay. Uh, so honorable mention, I'm going to mix my glaze here in a second, but I uh, also just want to share a little bit of my organization, uh, what I have behind me, and uh, also just talk a little bit about um, you know, I did mention that it's cheaper to mix your own glaze, but one of the issues is you do need kind of the upfront investment of buying your glaze materials, and so uh, I suppose that's an aspect of it that does sort of cost you more, uh, but in the long run it'll be cheaper. Um, with what's behind me, you know, I probably do have probably close to a thousand dollars worth of glaze materials kind of uh, sitting here, you know, with the intention that over time that my cost will be down uh, making my glazes. So. There's certain things you buy in 50 pound bags, there are certain things that you buy in five or 10 pound bags, and then there are things that you buy a pound of because they're $50 a pound. Uh, especially your bulk materials, you know, like your, your feldspars, anything that's gonna be 50 to 75%, or maybe not quite that high, but uh, you know, anywhere from 30 to 70% of an actual glaze, like I'm gonna work with uh, this copper red here in a second, and that's about 70 some percent custard feldspar. So that can be a big bulk of your material that you're buying. And you can get a 50 pound bag for uh, you know 30 to 40 dollars and that'll last you quite a long time uh, you'll have other things your different types of kaolins or um, you know some of your opacifiers like a zirco packs and so i'll buy those and anywhere from five or ten pounds so a lot of these are you know i got dolomite about 10 pounds so i got two five pound bags uh, i go through it enough that i don't I need more than a few pounds, but not enough where I actually need a 50 pound bag of it, although it wouldn't probably hurt. Um, so I keep a lot in these containers. Most of these containers hold about uh, five to 10 pounds depending on the material. You know, I keep a few smaller containers. These I have some 25 pound boxes that I can get. Um, and then I have 50 pound bags of certain things. And then for my colorants, you know, your different uh, oxides. You know, something like cobalt carbonate, you know, I buy a pound of it at a time, it'll last quite a while because you're only using a half a percent or just a little bit in your glazes. And so um, I'll keep those kinds of items in uh, smaller containers. And so I just keep it all back here and, uh, you know, I have my, another area where I keep all my large 50 pound bags and that works out pretty good for me. And so I uh, figure it's worth mentioning at least uh, how you keep all that stuff together and organized. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started mixing my glaze. Just a couple quick mentions. I always use a respirator. Um, you know, silicosis is a real thing, uh, and I just want my lungs to last as, pos as long as possible. So I do use a uh, P100 uh, respirator. So anything that's, uh, I'm not going to go into all the NIOSH masks right now, but uh, get yourself some sort of a P or an N100 mask, and um, that'll last you keep your lungs healthy. So I kind of got all my materials out here. I'm going to use some tin, I got some copper carbonate, um, some bentonite, just be bore I'll kind of go through the recipe as I go, although it's going to be hard to talk through a respirator, so it may just be that I end up watching a little bit of what I'm doing. And uh, maybe I'll do some sort of a speed it up so you don't get too bored watching it. But uh, I do have a scale, picked up a decent 10 pound scale, uh, kitchen scale. Uh, I've bought several off Amazon, and this is the one that seems to have lasted the longest. So, bigger, better, for what that's worth. So, 
and of course mixing cups and I'm gonna make some smaller these will probably be a thousand gram batch I'm gonna see how much powder I end up working with I might go with a 2,000 gram batch although I don't think that'll fit in here and uh, these are really just how I test I you can make smaller amounts but usually thousand gram batches are what I start with um, where I can at least still dip a cup or something like that Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so I'll do an honorable mention. So I do use uh, this book a lot. So we fire cone 10, so we have a lot of high fire pottery that we do. And I do use this book, uh, John Britt's Guide to High Fire Glazes. Uh, I love this book. It's been really great. We learned a lot from it and there's just a ton of recipes to work from. So there's quite a few in here that I'll work from. Today I'm going to do a Pete's Red that's in, in an ox blood category. Uh, so we're gonna give that a shot. I've tried some of the other ones and just got to keep trying and see what works and what we like. Safety first. So now I have a thousand grams in here. It looks about what I want. I couldn't fit another thousand if I wanted to, so uh, it'll be the right amount. I'll be able to do some uh, you know me tests and put those in there and actually have enough to cover it. So I do like testing with larger quantities and you can do like hundred gram batches and we've done that just throwing a test tile in there, but uh, I like being able to use you know me and you know for the most part all these glazes are pretty reliable. So you know if you're going to put some in here, you're going to get, you know, with any luck, good results. Um, so now the next thing to do is add some water, mix it up, uh, and then sieve it. I think uh, sieving is really important. Uh, if you don't do it, you'll end up with lumps and whatnot. Uh, if you can get a hold of different sieves, which are not here. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and uh, get this mixed up with some water, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, oh, I've got some fresh water here. I like to just start a little bit in. I don't think you can see that. Pretty good. Uh, now, this is a copper glaze. Uh, so, if I'm going to handle the actual glaze, I want to wear gloves. Um, there's some that I don't really care about, like the iron glazes. I don't, you know, worry too much about uh, the materials that are in it. When I start working with copper and cobalt and some of those oxides uh, that are water soluble or you can kind of absorb uh, and try to make sure that I wear gloves and once I start sieving I'll, I'll put some gloves on once they come in contact with the glaze. I just want to keep getting it mixed up. Now this glaze does include bentonite which is kind of used to kind of help stabilize the glaze. use some Epsom salts too to kind of help keep it flocculated, meaning that's in suspension. Uh, definitely had issues where it just becomes rock hard. So if you've ever left cornstarch in the bottom of a, you put water and cornstarch together, the cornstarch will settle and you get that kind of like hard collection or 
sort of, I don't know what the best way to put it is, separates out of the water. That's the issue. So you can use some different things like bentonite or Epsom salts and there are uh, commercial materials like Darvan that you can add that will help kind of keep that suspension, provide some other properties. So I do a lot of just sort of the finger test uh, once the glaze looks like it's going to coat pretty well. And uh, just get kind of an eye for it. And just a little bit of water at a time. Make sure you don't get too thick. Don't. That's probably about where I want it. I don't think I want to add any more water. Just keep breaking this up. So you get, get a good glaze. And then I'll go ahead and switch over to sitting it. So I'm back here with my wet glaze. I uh, use a sieve, so this is an 80 mesh sieve. Uh, pretty handy to have around. You definitely have to have at least one. Um, so definitely get a sieve. It's not quite the right size for my bucket here, but uh, it's just, uh, just what I'm working with. And then to get it through the sieve, uh, I'll use one of two things. I'll either, sometimes I use a rib and then the paintbrush. The paintbrush works probably the best. Uh, you just keep brushing back and forth. You keep moving the larger grains because your sieve will catch your larger materials and sieve those out, that's kind of the idea. Uh, and also help you break up clumps. So with any luck I can do this without losing any material around the sides, but yeah, it's always inevitable. Let's do my best here. working it through. Uh, the cool thing about these sieves is in a five gallon pail they just go right on the top. And so far so good, not making a mess. Uh, and I am wearing my gloves. So I'm going to come in contact with Glazes sieve better than others. This is pretty lumpy right now, and I suspect that's partly due to all the bentonite in here. But you only gotta really do it once, and then once you got it, you're good. Almost done. Uh-oh. Sometimes 
just a little extra water. Just kind of wash everything out here. Just enough not to thin my glaze out too much, but it helps me clean up the sieve. Kind of see some of the larger particulates come out and that's really what you're after and now you have a pretty nice uh, cleaned up glaze. Just finish mixing a little bit here and good to go. So it is a messy job sometimes, and uh, probably didn't do the best job, but good enough. And that's why I do it outside. So there you go. We got our glaze good to go, and we got some cleanup, but nothing to hose and some water can't fix. So uh, with any luck, maybe that's kind of useful to you guys seeing how a glaze is made, and um, you know, kind of getting the confidence that you can go ahead and do it go from there. So, happy throwing.